fans of the Horus Heresy, Warhammer 40,000, Mecha, and alternative resin science fiction miniatures, thank you very much for joining me for a model and build review of a Proteus Frontline Battle Mech with Chain Gun by White Dragon Miniatures. So here we have in front of us this interesting resin model. I picked this up a few weeks ago at the Derby World's Wargaming Show, or maybe it's a month ago now. I thought we'll take a look at it. And there was one very specific reason that this model caught my eye as someone who plays Warhammer 40,000 and in particular the Horus Heresy. And that's what a lot of this review will be thinking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a bit about the actual kit and the construction of the model and how I found that and then I'm going to move on to a series of size comparisons. I'm not going to do any tactical analysis because I don't have the rules for this particular model and I don't really know them. But this is from the Shattered Void universe, which is White Dragon Miniatures own particular science fiction setting. You may know them better for the ship combat Shattered Void side of things as opposed to the marine tactical unit style 15 millimeter skirmish. And indeed, this model here is scaled in 15 millimeter. Let's start off by having a look around the model. So, what do I think? Well, it's a very fine looking model. It's a good sculpt. There's lots of detail, as we can see. It has an angular, shall we say, modern military style look to it. And anyone who's seen any of the Metal Gear universe imagery We'll see that um, I, I believe there's obviously quite a strong influence on this. In general, manga, mecha influence on this particular sculpt. So let's have a close look at some of the details on this. So it's armed with this handheld chain gun. So it's held like a rifle almost. And it has this large ammunition feed into this ammo hopper on the right shoulder. There are some neat little details such as these grenade dispensers which you might imagine to be countermeasure launchers or smoke dispensers, so I like that. And there's more such detail on the chest here and here, and then another set of launchers perhaps on the left shoulder block. The chain gun's got quite a bit of detail. Very nice barrel sculpt. There you go, that's the focus. That's an eight barreled weapon. You can see there's a bit of detail here. I cut that on because there was a key attachment point here and I just nicked it off a bit. And this was supposed to be just rectangular, this top bit. So I just re-sculpted a few details into it to hide that damage and actually it ended up looking better, I think. So this is a monopose model and it really is designed only to go together one way. I use some heat bending to reposition the torso and the legs and the arms a little bit into more of a firing stance, but I mean, there isn't much difference. I mean, as it comes, the model, the torso is twisted a bit this way and the gun's in tight to the chest. So I was able to reposition it a bit. The resin that this is made from heats up very quickly and is very malleable. So it's easy to bend and reposition. However, it will tear more easily than say forge world resin if you're used to working with that. I repositioned the torso and I got a tear on the waist, which I've since reinforced with super glue. Model's fine, but just something to bear in mind if you are working with these. Lots of details all around very blocky, square, militaristic design style. And there's a head, and you do get an alternate head as well, which is, a, I think, a plainer style than this. It's a nice model in itself, and I'm sure in the context of a Shattered Void game, it's a it'll be a cool unit. This cost 15 pounds in the UK. I bought it at the game show, so I didn't have any postage costs to pay. Right, in terms of the build, so yeah, I talked a bit about the manipulation of the resin. Cleanup wise, there was not much cleanup to do. This was very nicely cast. There were a couple of bits of filling to do, and you can see them on this ammunition feed. I've not filed those down yet, so they still look a little bit rough in places. And then I think there was a bit of an air bubble or something here that I filled as well. So that was about all. It was pretty straightforward. In terms of attaching the ammo feed, I stuck this bit on first. So this end where it attaches to the gun and then attached it to the ammo hopper. Once I'd done that, it had this sort of weird, slightly weird shape. So I heated it up and just made it look like it was hanging a bit more naturally. You could leave it as it comes or you could heat it up pretty much to look any way you want it to, I suppose. Not a great deal of posability in this figure, although the pose it does come in is a nice one. 
I think the only other thing to note was this has a small mounting peg. I drilled a little hole because the actual cast hole wasn't big enough to really take the attachment peg and that just strengthened it as well. No pinning required, so pretty straightforward assembly and stuck it together with super glue. The base, this is a 60 millimeter Citadel base. The model is supplied without a base which is a bit unusual if you're selling models for a game system. You should sell it with a base, but maybe they're aiming them at a more general market because they can be compatible. And indeed, that's why I bought it. So I put it on the 60mm base and it fits it nicely. Now, on that point, let's do the size comparisons because this is what really attracted me to this model is its usability in the 40K universe. So I'm only going to do size comparisons with three models and there's a good reason for that. So firstly, here we have a Forge World Space Marine miniature. So this particular one is one of my Iron Hands Legion, and this is a heavy support marine armed with a Volkite Culverin and decked out with lots of Iron Hands components. This is one of my favorite models. I've not yet reviewed this squad. If you'd like to see a review of that, you'll have to let me know. But yeah, I was particularly proud of how this squad came out. Right, so there's a standard heroic scale 28 millimeter figure, a space marine. So this is a big robot. It's about twice the height of a space marine. And the reason that's interesting is because my gut feel was this was going to be a really good substitute robot. And there's two examples to compare against to demonstrate the size. Firstly, let's think about the Horus Heresy and playing as a Mechanicum. Here we have one of the ubiquitous Kill It All Castellax robots. This particular example is armed with a dark fire cannon and a pair of bolt guns on its forearms. It's a very nice model. And if we compare the two side by side, we actually see that they're of a comparable height. Now, clearly the Castellax is a bulky miniature. But in terms of the overall heights and the sort of space that the two occupy, I would certainly put them in the same class. And that's why I think these are particularly interesting because I think they are an excellent alternative to robot miniatures. If you're wanting to play Mechanicum or Cult Mechanicus list in 40K, these are a great substitute and at 15 pounds a go, they're much cheaper than Castellax. Or, of course, if we're talking about Warhammer 40,000 and the Cult Mechanicus, the Castellan robots. Here we have an example armed with a pair of fists and a heavy phosphor blaster. And again, there's a size comparison between the two. Now, if you're playing in any sort of official GW tournaments, if you turn up with a force of these as Castellax, then some organizers are going to turn some sort of shade of red and some sort of nerd rage, the heresy of your proxying choices. But if you play smaller games with friends in a much more easygoing group of people about what miniatures you use, I think these are excellent Castellax or even Castellans. They're a good price for what they are. Obviously, these two models have got incredible posability because of how they're made compared to this. Probably about 75% of the cost of that, and it's less than half of the cost of a Castellax. So economically, it's a viable proposition. You can also get this in two different weapon configurations. You can get one armed with a rail gun and one armed with a sort of heavy auto cannon type weapon. So you've got some weapon variety there as well. You know, and if you're wanting it with these sort of forearm mounted weapons on the Castellax where you could add them on, or you could simply say that the Units on the shoulders are those secondary weapon systems. There you go, that is the Proteus Battle Mech armed with chain gun by White Dragon Miniatures. A very handsome looking science fiction robot model and certainly compares with the best of them. And yes, as I say, if you're looking to do Mechanicum Force but you don't want to use Games Workshop figures and you're looking for alternatives, well, I think these are an excellent proposition to fill your robot slot. That's my review. I hope you found this an interesting look around this model and my thoughts around how this could be used in games of 40K. As always, please share your ideas and observations about this miniature in the comment section. I'll be very interested to hear. Do you like this as a model in itself? Would you build a force using it as a proxy for another robot? Or indeed, have you used this in the Shattered Void gaming universe? What's it like? As I say, I don't have any experience with that, so I'll be interested to hear if you've got any knowledge of that as well. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.